Welcome everybody to another live stream. Oh, I can't believe a month has go, gone by. I don't know about you, but time just seems to be slipping through my fingers. I meant to spend about a month off this summer and somehow I ended up as about a couple of weeks and I worked through most of it. So coming back and it's September 
and it's straight back into things is is like well the summer's over and it's gone and I did do a lot of good modeling so can't really complain so welcome to everybody welcome to all those people who I've already said hi to in chat and uh, I've just seen Grandpa Rails Dark Side Scenics Jaw 21 stating the obvious <laughs> sorry I missed you up there and um Vanaja Diesel just Tim Stringer loads and loads of people coming on so welcome to you all this week we have the exciting topic of Daz Clay but try as I might I can't talk about Daz Clay for two hours I just it's exciting but I had to go and google someone else's YouTube video on how to get it to work so I don't feel I'm really the expert and um, because of that I thought we'd talk about something else and I put a poll up and I'll talk about imposter syndrome in a minute but first wait for whilst everybody's like creeping in and I see Phil Wright's arrived he's chilling out after an afternoon driving a seven and a quarter inch quarry handler very nice very nice I'm hoping mine will appear at some point um Hi to Fultz Bailey Model Railroad, Mark Warren from Scalemont Models, Alan Sherilyn, Alan I guess, as it's Alan says hi from New Zealand, and everybody else who's coming on now. <sighs> Whilst everyone comes in, I've been doing a lot of 3D printing, partly driven by the fact that over the last few months I've had two free printers and I now owe at least four videos out to the manufacturers who sent me the free video, the free printers. And I'm printing so I can do these videos. And it's been fascinating because I had a presser already, which to be honest, I hated for the first year I had it. I've gone into detail for my patrons and they'll be getting that video this week. I actually recorded the same thing three times because I just waffle way too much. And I've now got a Creality Ender 3 S1 Pro. And the Creality Ender 3 is like the bog standard. Everybody has it. It's really reliable. It doesn't level as easily as the presser, so I've had a few leveling issues. But basically, it's printing like a champ. I think I've got the temperature right on the filament now. It wasn't quite right. I put some pressment in for the first time in a long time. And it looks really sweet. And that is printing a Second Dynasty Stinger as we speak. And on the other print of my presser, I've got a happy birthday card from my mum. So let's see who else is snuck in. We've got John Yu, woohoo, live this month, that's good. Possum Bayou, hi. Roberson Express, hi, see you too. Dragon, Dragon Junction Mark II, hi, Cathy and everyone. And welcome, welcome to everybody. And I have to start off by saying a big thank to Norm. Digger and Timber, I haven't seen Timber yet actually, sorry if you're on there Timber, who are my moderators. Thank you so much for the hard work you do getting rid of all the spam bots, especially the um, ones that want you to go to adult dating lines. I don't want you leaving during the live stream, so don't click on those links. I promise you'll probably regret it. I just had one earlier. I think it's a scam. It's someone telling me I've got a copyright claim against my last video, but it doesn't actually say what it's for. Um, and normally they say for a song, and I know the song is from YouTube Audio Library, so it's very unlikely it's going to have a copyright claim against it. And I'm just looking at it going, it must be a spam. But it's so hard to work out. It's got YouTube written on it, and people copyright claim all the time. It says three strikes and we'll cancel your channel. It's like, well, that would come from YouTube, and that's not how YouTube works. YouTube just demonetizes it and gives the money to the other person who's made the copyright claim. And I've had copyright claims from YouTube, erroneously, and fixed them. So I'm thinking it's a scam. Who else has snuck on? Ooh, we've got Makero Sidings. Hello from North East Ontario. Welcome. Welcome. You're probably getting a little bit nicer weather. We're just sliding into that autumn. It was very foggy this morning, cleared up towards the afternoon. And um, yeah, welcome to everybody. The other things that I'm printing absolutely a shed ton of is on my Elegu Mars 3, which is my other new printer. So I got a Creality Ender 3 S1 Pro and a Elegu Mars 3. I already had an Elegu Mars and it printed like a champ and I loved it. Following my Anycubic Photon that I could rarely get to print anything, it just was levelled from the outset and has 
any fails that it's had have been always about the model and supports rather than about the printer. It has just been a dream. And, and you know, I've had so few fails on it. It just prints beautifully. I've got it clear, any cubic clear with 20% tenacious in there and I'm just printing 24 seven. At the moment, it's got a Lara Croft hanging off it because I need to do two videos for them. And one of them is a Colossus by Print Minis. It's a sort of wheeled vehicle. And um, it's probably gonna go on a moonscape or something. I haven't quite decided yet. And the then I thought for the other one, I'll do one of the Tomb Raider dioramas I'm planning. I've got these um, Tomb Raider boxes, which have the game in actually, and I've got five of them. And I'm gonna put various Tomb Raider figures on them um, at some point. I've got five projects currently on the go, printing or on the workbench. It was getting a bit of a headache, but I hate the print delaying a project. So I print generally a month in advance of when I actually need the project. So let's see who else. McCary Siding, welcome. I don't think I've said hello. Oh no, I've said hello to you. Where am I? I'm out. Patrick. Usually the links or email address where it comes from gives it away as they're not the right Earl. Yeah, it said warding at cr-67377.site. I thought, hmm, that doesn't look like you who YouTube to me. So McCary Siding, cloudy and 30 degrees C. Nice. We were 14 when I went out this morning. It's a bit lower. Hi, Darth Birds. Thank you. I'm glad I'm your favourite. It's always good to be someone's favourite. We'll talk about that later on. And then um, stating the obvious says the YouTube scan downside of vi downloads a virus via the document it links to and there's a video about it on YouTube. Good to know. I thought that. I delete anything. And once you've had a copyright strike, um, you know the YouTube process. But if you're uh, somebody who hasn't had one, and I had it when I used a royalty free, but you had to subscribe to the website, and I had two videos up, one for um, uh, patrons and one for members. And I use the same link on both of them and you can't do that. So I got a copyright strike on one of them. And it was interesting. And I just downloaded the same song again and got the right link for it and put it on and it cleared it. And I wrote to them and asked it and they were very, very helpful. And I've basically just stuck with YouTube audio library ever since because it's easier. But I went through a phase of every single YouTube audio library got a copyright claim on Instagram instead. I'm like, I don't make any money off Instagram. So you're going to take my video down. But, you know, it's not like it cost me anything. Um, hi to Marcus from Kigali, Rwanda. Wow, that is that is impressive. We've made it all the way to Rwanda. I suppose the furthest person is actually New Zealand. Um, so I think they're going to win on distance. And I was going to be there just before lockdown. And I am denied about going for the October convention. I was going to be the guest speaker. But um, it was just so expensive. I didn't think I was good value for money for them at the moment. And I, I wanted to put a trip onto New Zealand, but it's just still so expensive. And I haven't earned for two years, really. So I kicked it off and they've got a different guest speaker. And I'm just doing a couple of clinics instead, which won't be the same. But I hope at some point I can make it there. Um, Kevicus first. Hi. Yeah, I've got a headache. I've been having headaches on and off working and it's either the fumes, though everyone tells me it's probably not the fumes anymore. I I've sorted a lot of it out now and um, it's probably tension and stress of being a <laughs> low paid self-employed modeler. But hey, um, so Norm just asked about that. Um, is my headache related to my printing? Do you know, I've got air purifiers in every room, which is great running them in our energy prices as they are. I can't smell it, but my friends come in and say they can smell chemicals. But I was chatting to someone who was saying the side effects of 3D printing are not normally headaches, they're normally burning sensations and things like that. And he wondered if it was carbon dioxide. The only appliance in my house that has carbon dioxide is the boiler, and that's in the same room. But all the doors are shut to it. I, I'm doing my best. And in my new workshop, I'm going to get a downdraft extractor to the side. And it's like using cooking, the ones that go on islands, and it will suck sideways. Because that's really the fumes that I get at the moment. And coming out the summer, I've had the door open most of the time, and I've still been getting the headaches. So I think it's probably, I don't know, I don't know what it is. Someone told me it was just I'm that age of a woman. It's like, that's depressing. Thank you for that. 
Um, and Darth Buzz says, hello everyone, what a friendly lot. It is a really nice, friendly bunch. I, I do love doing these live streams, partly because I work on my own. It's great to talk to people, even if I'm talking at people, but also it's great just, I mean, I've met so many great people through these live streams and I do apologize, should I meet you in person, I will look really blankly at you. Even Digger and Norm and Timber, hi Timber, you know, I probably will just look blankly at because our names and faces are not good. And when they're just names on chat, I really do struggle, even though I talk to Digger most days on Discord. And talking of Discord, I put the link for it right at the top of chat. If you want to join my Discord channel, I did have it as patrons and members only, and they've got a section within it. But to be honest, the only people who really talk on it are actually my moderators like Digger and people that have come over from other discords that I've invited generally. So I thought I'm probably just going to open it open to like everybody because the more people on there, the more other people's modeling goes on and not just mine, which makes it more interesting. But I tend to post daily what I'm doing. So you can see pictures of what's getting 3D printed at the moment mostly. But it, um, the next trick is actually to turn all those 3D prints into dioramas. And yeah, so there we go. <laughs> That's it's definitely what's going on. But it's right at the top of the chat. And if you haven't done the poll on imposter syndrome, we'll talk about that in about half an hour, three quarters of an hour or so. So Polite says he's got a copyright claim too because of free library music. It was good until my video got a bunch of views. Suddenly the music author changed his mind about free use. I think if it's in the audio library and you've linked to it, they can't just do that. So that's interesting that you say that. Um, so yeah. I, the, all the ones I had on Instagram were by different musicians and videos and songs to the actual ones on YouTube Audio. And they're very close to them, but not the same. They sounded similar, but weren't the same. So I don't know if they were just having a problem, but they took down some of my top videos, which really annoyed me. Not that I have that many top videos, to be honest, on Instagram. Um, Frank Words, nice to see you again. And yeah. <laughs> Timbersurf says he got a copyright claim on music he composed himself. That is just the trouble. There were, I got one for an FCP drone sound. I'm like, it's a drone sound. It sounds just like the next drone sound. I swapped it to drone sound number two from drone sound number one. But it's funny what people claim on. But the um, Instagram ones were a year, two years after I posted some of the videos. So it was really sus. Um, but that actually did come from Instagram. Patrick, ooh, convention, I guess I'm out of the loop, not being rail, but general 24 scale. Yeah, it was the New Zealand and Australia model railway convention I was going to go to. But sadly not. Um, I'd like to go at some point in the future, but it's just, it wasn't a great time. I'm hoping to start a new job around that time as well. And it didn't seem good to be out then for three or four weeks. Um, so Dragon Junction, do you ever watch Piccadilly Model Railway? He 3D printed all of his station canopy and engaged. The guys will tell you worth a look. I haven't, but I will check him out afterwards. I'll have to scroll back up and remember it. Um, Kevicus says side effects of 5G. Could be. They're about to put a giant mass near us, but there's none in the area that close at the moment. And my signal's fairly poor in the house. So maybe not. Patrick says dehydration. Do you know, I drink like a fish. Um, I, I, being an office worker prior to this, I have a glass, I have a cup of tea, mug of tea, but it's Chinese tea, so it's mostly hot water by the end of the day, probably every hour. So I don't think it is dehydration, though that will give me a headache. And, um, <laughs> and Polite once got claimed for intrinsic noise in my camera. That's funny. What, what annoys me about this headache is I've given up red wine. I don't want to give up the chocolate, but I've given up um, Pepsi Max cherry flavour, which was giving me headaches and also giving me stomach aches. So that stuff is bad for you. And I gave that up. I'd gone up to a can a day and, and I'm, I keep giving stuff up and I'm still getting the headaches. That's the frustrating thing. Yeah, David also says likely carbon monoxide rather than carbon dioxide. It's what you get with a faulty boiler. Experienced it once and it gives one head a headache, even feeling sick. Thing is, I've had these headaches for two years and the boiler is like down on the other side of the house. And I go in there to get the 3D prints out. The door is shut. There's no venting in there. But literally the door's shut on it 90% of the time. So I do have, I said to the guy who mentioned it, I'll get a carbon monoxide one. I've got two gas fires and I used to have the little ones by them. But it was serviced, you know, serviced every year and they do that test then and it wasn't putting anything out a year ago and I've had the headaches for two years. So, hmm, not good. 
Um, so Patrick says, Alan and Sherilyn, have you been to the New Zealand Convention? Where can I locate details about them? I think it's NZAMRC and it's in Christchurch, 7th to the 10th of October. And I will be doing two clinics, but they'll be at odd times for you so that they're not too late for me. I think the first thing in the morning. So Timber says, the claim of copying my music, changed the end, posted it as his own channel, uplift, upheld my, and then YouTube upheld my claim and took down the video. Oh, that's good. Um, that's, that's quite scary. <laughs> well, no, because I kicked the Pepsi Max a year ago, uh, nine months ago, because it was making me ill. So I haven't touched, I haven't touched any fizzy drinks. I bought myself a soda stream. So fizzy water is my thing. It makes me feel grown up. I said that the other day and one of my friends said to me, but Kathy, you are grown up. Don't spoil it. Um, <laughs> and then, so Jules21 says, YouTube's gone to the pits now, constant ads every two seconds and lower monetization for content creators. Hence why everyone is flogging VPN sponsored videos to make a living. I'm going to talk about that in a minute as well. It's, it's linked in with the imposter syndrome, actually. And yeah, Tim, I was so ill when I gave up Pepsi Max. I was on a can a day. I was ill for about two weeks with solid headaches. I'd had stomach cramps. I was I was really bad. So, and that was just on a can of pep. And other than that, I drink Chinese green tea. It, it's jasmine tea. It's, it's very low caffeine, generally. Um... So Kevicus, when you did the X-Wing fighter scene in the Swamp Scale, was it smart model-like? It was a 1-48 to 3D print um, that I got off. It was actually a 1-64, to which I resized. Um, so there we go. Oh, Norm, don't tell me I've got to give up the chocolate. That is the next thing. That is the next thing I'm giving up if I don't kick the headaches. I think they're partly tension-related and stress-related as well. Um, but I've only had them since working at home and I've eaten chocolate my whole life. Um, so there we go. Um, so Darth Burr says, looking forward to Darth's claim in process syndrome. I use it a lot and I think I'm very good at it and never will. And don't think I'm very good at it and never will. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, I've had mixed bag with um, Darth's clay. So this was an interesting one. It actually worked this time. Um... So for all those people like John New saying, watch YouTube via the Brave browser and it cuts out YouTube adverts, that means people like me don't get any money. So I have mixed views on that. Um, and Patrick, I'm definitely not growing up anytime soon. I tell you what though, whilst everyone's chatting, I'm going to put on the movie in the background. And this is my modelling for the last... So I did all this earlier in the summer. And I actually had the final video on the 1st of July with the TV company and it's going on there. So I'm doing this, having done this a while ago. And this week it is all Daz Clay and Sculpt Mould. Literally, it's an hour and a half sped up. It was seven or eight hours recorded, but longer than that modelling because I don't record everything. And the last time I used Daz Clay, it was a disaster. I used it to make a tree for a halo diorama. It all cracked and fell off. It kind of shrank, cracked and fell off. And I ended up using Celluclay instead over just newspaper, I think. It wasn't great. So this time I did what any self-respecting YouTuber does when they don't know how to use something. I went on YouTube and I looked at Mel the Train Tutor and looked at his videos because he does some great videos and I'd watched it previously, but a long time ago. And he gave two or three top tips so I'm going to pass the two or three top tips I got from him on and suggest you all go and watch his video. Great glass placement there. I cut the rest of that video because that's just there for the next hour. Um, but I suggest you go and watch that video if you want to know more. But his two or three top tips were, one, always put water onto whatever it is that you're going to stick down to. If he, and he, he does all the demonstrations. If you put clay on and you put it onto a dry surface, it will come off. If you wet the surface first and put Daz clay on, it sort of sucks it in microscopically. And that was really good. The other thing he talks about, and there's a cloth to the left in this video I used a lot, damp cloths over everything so it dries out slowly and then you don't get cracking. And that made such a difference to me. But first, I made some cobbles. 
And these are to go along the track. So I actually, I tried putting them in the place, but I wasn't very happy. So I actually let them dry on the side. Um, this is the width, it's very straight that from this angle, isn't it? I think it's a bit of foreshortening. Um, but these are 3D prints I made of a cobble pattern, just a normal cobble pattern. I made them in Blender. And these were too fat. There's an awful lot of me putting them up there, thinning them down, they're a bit too fat, thinning them down again. And in the end, I just left them on the side to dry and then sanded them even flatter. So I got them the right sort of shape, let them dry and then sanded them flat and sanded the edges to make sure everything ran. So there's quite a lot of this going on. So I'll go back to chat because you're going to watch this for a bit. And the clean film is just to stop it sticking and um, yeah, to the surface top. And that's a very exciting rolling pen. It's all I could find, a Yoohoo stick. Um, right, chocolate is impossible to give up, says Digger. I think that's where I got to. For me, it's a major one of my food groups, so it would be. Yeah, Patrick, I, I've no plans to grow up. I was um, watching Industrial Light and Magic, the ILM story that's on Disney+. Plus. It's great if you want to look at the models from Star Wars and how they did everything through to Jurassic Park and through to the current day. And the people at Industrial Light and Magic, you realise, I didn't realise how much George Lucas was behind digital everything. He basically invented the digital cinema, the sort of world that we live in today. And I knew he was into it, but I didn't realise how fundamentally he drove it and funded it and how much of a debt we really owe to him. So anyway, I was um, watching that and one of the stories the guy says was his daughter came into him and said, oh, dad, she used to love playing with her plastic toys and doing stories and says, she says, I'm too old to play with plastic toys anymore. He said, no, dear, just get a film camera out and you can do it for the rest of your life. And he was a stop motion animator. So basically, um, yeah, she got a film out and they went and filmed something, <laughs> which makes me laugh. So the answer is never grow up, become a filmmaker instead. Um, it's where I got to. Headaches, vapors from paints, glues, plastic thinners, Westwood side studios. Oh, that's what I thought it was. But even through the summer when every single window is and door is open, I'm still getting it. And sometimes I get them when I've, I've been doing a lot of 3D printing and then I think it's the IPA, not the actual resins. But yeah, I, they don't seem to be triggered by when I'm doing really fumy stuff. I just seem to get them. So anyway, who knows? Um, <laughs> Tim thinks he might be pushing 50, but mentally he's about 12. I'm not going to comment on your mental age, Tim. But um, 12 sounds a bit young. You want to be old enough to deal with dangerous chemicals and knives. I'd go mid-teens. Um, so Tamsin's finished a blog post. And she can concentrate on this. Brilliant. David, he only gets bad headaches when he gives up chocolate completely. Not good for a diabetic. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, back to the um, movie that's playing on the big screen for a sec. Uh, you can see I'm putting water down and then I'm using my thumb. I actually made a mistake here in that I put this down. I did all the Daz clay. Then I put the slate on and then I put the slate loads on and it wasn't even. I think I wish I'd had this. I didn't have them printed at this point, which is why I didn't put them in. I wish I'd had all my slate piles. There's piles and piles of slate that go onto this key in about three videos time. It's one of the last things that goes on. And um, I wish I'd had them out and got them nice and flat on this surface because I wanted an undulating surface because the dock looks really pitted and puddled and stuff. But actually, it's not as pitted and puddled. And that's the trouble with doing scale modelling. Pits and puddles can become like swamps and major ponds in scale and I think some of my undulations were perhaps a little dramatic on this let's put it that way um so yeah oh boy the movie says Norm so Ravison Express maybe you have some muscle tension with your neck that can also cause headaches it does feel like a tension headache it's just across my forehead the whole time um just a dull pain so it's just a dull pain and I'm I'm just getting fed up. I've had it for two years now and um, it comes and goes and it is, um, but yeah. 
and actually care because I went to an osteopath and one of the things that the, I used to do that I don't do, do anymore is Pilates and my headache started after I stopped Pilates and actually now you say that I wonder if the Pilates was doing something and I stopped because I wasn't earning and it was lockdown and I was chatting to um, Chiropodist because I've got wonky legs I'm falling apart it's my age and um, she said I should be doing Pilates again but I need to be earning before I go back and um, yeah I thought you expressed it really well, Ravenson. I, I got exactly what you meant. And I would not tell you weren't a native English speaker from that. So Norm says Mel is great. If you don't know Mel, the trained tutor, he does do some absolutely just brilliant, useful stuff. Really, really useful. And I think Mel's been linked by Timber just down there. So that's really useful. Um... And I see a lot of people use Daz Clay. This is the first time I've ever used it. And I am denied about doing the walls. You can see them, I 3D printed them. They were heavy in Blender to get done. I wondered about doing them in Daz Clay. I think now I probably would, but I was worried A, about weight, which is actually ludicrous because Daz Clay dries really light and B, just how to get that pattern without carving it by hand, which I thought would take a long time. Blender took a long time, but it was evening time, not daytime time, which I take daytime is modeling time and evening is computer time. Um, so yeah. John Gray, Kathy, it could be a hydrogen sulfide leak, sewer gas. At first it stinks, but after a short time you stop smelling it. My friends had a faulty Durgo valve on a drain, which allowed the gases in. I have no idea what a Durgo valve is, but um, I think all of my drains should have U-bends on them. So, hmm. Oh, I've got Mel's book. It's really good. I, I got the physical book. I went through a stage, um, being a creator and not earning a lot, the one thing I do do now is support people when they do books. I've bought a lot of books of things that I've hardly read just because I wanted to give people the cash for, you know, the work that they've done. It's like I bought a load of OMC t-shirts so that the artist who did them and donated them for free got the money from them because I can't really afford very much but books and t-shirts feel like necessities and I put the books through the company probably. Um, Phil says when he tried cobbles I poured plaster of Paris over the whole area, sanded it down to the railhead then hand carved. Long-winded and time-consuming but well worth it. I, I once did plaster of Paris and I found it softer and easier to carve than probably Daz but I found it really clogged my um, the bits round where the track train wanted to run and my steam trains caught on it because it was a little bit proud just beyond the track and they had pipes hanging down. It wasn't great. Um, it wasn't great. So that I'm sure yours was fine, but I'm, I struggle a bit with my track. So on this, thankfully the rail was very proud generally, except where the cobbles go in the middle and they're the bits that I've been rolling out and they're just sitting here drying at the moment. Um, just get a film camera out and you can do anything for the rest of your life. <laughs> it's a good quote, isn't it, Scott? Um, so Kerikus had bad heads for years and had physio and shoulders, not had one since, only cost £40. Pounds. Right, brilliant. I actually did chemistry at uni, says Tim. Probably a bit casual with modelling chemicals because of that. Yeah, I did biology at uni and I did A-level chemistry. And do you know, I have so many extractor fans running. I can't even smell the resin in the 3D print room at the moment. But when I came home off, I'd been to take my sister to my dad's. So I'd been out for three days in August. And I came back and I walked into my mum's house to drop her off. Her house just smelled musty, like it'd been closed up. I walked into mine, it smelled chemicals. My friend came around the other day and she was like, oh, it stinks of chemicals. And I'd left the lid off the isopropyl alcohol 3D cleaning station by mistake. And so I shut it and we went and sat outside. But it's the IPA that really stinks my house out the most that I use. Um, so stating the obvious isn't when he says, we headaches, have you considered eye strain? So I had my eyes done about a year ago last and I'd had the headaches for a year before. They said my eyes were fine. So I had considered it and gone. And um, so I went in the middle of my headaches. Um, 
Ah, it's interesting. So Darth Buzz says all his headaches disappeared. This is like a health channel now, isn't it? We'll get on to modeling now, I promise. When he went from vegetarian to vegan, it was the dairy. I don't do a lot of dairy apart from chocolate. I don't like milk. I don't really like cheese. Um, I don't do huge amounts of dairy. I don't have milk on anything. I don't drink it in anything. Damp cloths, just to keep the um, models from drying out too quickly. Really works, I think. Um, so it's interesting. I actually went dairy free for a while and I didn't notice any difference much to my diet, to be honest. Um, so Roman Norm says, ILM was originally located at Van Nuys Airport in San Fernando Valley. If I'd known, I would have gone over and off to work for free. They were mere miles from your house. Oh, that's, that's, um, that's a shame. A lot of the stories of people on this programme are people who one guy did just turn up and go there and they eventually offered him a job. I suspect because he was also very good. Um, but yes. Another vote for Mel's book. Draw 21. Could be my sinuses. I don't know what it is, but um, I think it's... It, 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 yeah, it's here. I had a cold this week as well, so I suspect that's what set this one off. Um, so Mark, I have a block of Daz clay. I haven't used it yet. The last couple of dioramas I've done, I've used Durham's water putty for both sun scenes. I've got to say, Durham's water putty is an American thing. Uh, I've never seen over here. Um, so, oh, one hand, one eek. Brisbane, is it? Um, good morning. Oh, yeah, there we are, 5.32 a.m. in Brisbane. Now, I was up at 5.32 this morning, but I don't expect to see... Um, that's because I went to bed early because I had a cold. Um, I don't expect to see other people up that early. Right, don't worry about being late, Mark. Um... So, Raverson Express says he has something similar to Daz Clay here. He bought it at a Bosner shop, but he hasn't tested it yet. So, Daz Clay is just an air drying clay. And there's one advantage to it it's air drying. It's relatively cheap in the UK. I got the white just because that's what I happened to get. And because it's air drying, you don't need to bake it in an oven. Now, do you remember I said I put these separate? So, I then glued them and put them in place separately and that was so I could get them thin and sand the sides so you'll see me every now and then on this running the trains when you're doing things like this you so need to run the trains a lot and then to go along the edges I used a bit more of the cobble and I eroded away with a knife the edges of the cobble because they're kind of pulled away as they might over time when they've been trodden and then it's been tarmacked next to them so it's kind of tarmacked onto them but they're eroding and there's a few little puddles and things there um oh yes i have my own book norma has reminded me i have a book it's on amazon yay building realistic model railroad scenery but it's not just railroad you could use this for dioramas and anything really there's one chapter on track and that's about it there's railroad the planning is very railroad as well, but everything else, all the techniques are just pure scenery. And actually a lot of the, the them that are in the book where I've taken the photos are on small dioramas rather than on big railroads, just because it's easier to do the photos that way. Right, so, Daz Clay going in the background. And what you'll see me doing for the next hour is realistically putting in bits of Daz clay and then putting in other bits of Daz clay and I'm either using glue or water to stick them down. There'll be damp cloths over a lot of things to keep them from drying out too quickly. And I've got to fill the whole of this. It took me ages, which is why it's a whole week's video. But I didn't think it was really going to fill me talking about it for two hours. Um, so I decided we talk about imposter syndrome. And I've been thinking about imposter syndrome a lot recently. And what brought it up is I'm getting a new job. Um, I'm very excited and absolutely daunted by the new job. And I keep hoping that I'll be able to announce it soon. And for those of you who don't know, it will be being in charge of the modelling side of a new tourist attraction that's basically a miniature railway in London. So it's very much railways and other modelling 
it's a dream job for someone who's a modeler and I'm really looking forward to it. But I went down the other day and they had somebody who's an expert in doing these types of attractions, not Minute to Worlds, but just attractions. And he said to me, will I have heard of you? And I just kind of went, well, um, probably not unless you follow me on social media. And I said this to the, the new boss. And he's like, Kathy, you're on TV, you know. He's like, oh yeah. And a few days later, I was chatting to someone who's a huge inspiration to me. He's one of my favourite creators, not into railway, so you may not know him. And I'm not going to say who it was. But um, we were chatting and he'd, he's got a job. He's actually working for an art director who's one of my all-time favourite art directors. And he's doing an amazing modelling job, really, really good. And, but throughout his career, he's done a huge variety and I've always found him one of the most inspiring people. I love what he does. I love his innovation, his trying new materials, but also his quality. And he's always been an inspiration. I've looked up to him and I would name as one of my top two or three people who inspire me the most. And he said to me, yeah, you know, I got this job and I feel like a real imposter. You know, I don't feel I'm good enough to do it. And I'm looking at him thinking, you are the guy that inspires me. You are the guy who I look up to more than almost anybody else. And he, he, he got in touch with me on Instagram to tell me he got this new job. So we have a, you know, a chatty relationship every now and then. And I was just like, oh, you know, we all get it. And the more I've become in the creative world, the more insecure I feel about my modeling, funnily enough. And I think it comes down, we've been talking about YouTube earlier. It comes down to the fact everything you put out there is judged on a popularity scale, not a quality scale. And I actually don't think my quality is that great when I'm doing YouTube because I have to go for quantity. And there are some things where I just don't feel I did a great job. I feel I rushed it. It didn't look like the concept in my head looked. I maybe locked things down too early because I was rushing through. Or one or two of them, I just didn't get around to doing all the things I wanted to do because I, I was fed up and bored and wanted to get the video out. And Jurassic Park would be an example of this. Um, and a few people commented, um, it's not got enough water splashes. And I thought, I didn't mean to do those. I just got so caught up in the projected backdrops that I forgot. And there's this point in a YouTube video's life where you stop putting it on Instagram as whip and it's more or less ready to go. So you miss the kind of, here's the final photos. You leave those until the video's out, by which point it's too late. So you don't get any feedback on the final thing until it's out there. And the other thing was I wanted to maybe reuse the T-Rex so I didn't want him to look too wet. So with hindsight, I'm never going to do that. And I haven't glued the top on because I knew I wasn't quite happy. But it just made me think, you know, imposter syndrome. And if I look at the poll, nearly half of people say no idea. So imposter syndrome, if I was to define it, is where you don't feel your work is good enough. And what I find is the people that tend to have imposter syndrome tend to be the people who do it professionally or do it a lot, who are people who are out there a lot. So I see some really top modelers in other areas, often cosplay or sci-fi or stuff like that. And they just say, I totally feel like my work's not good enough. And they're always really top of the game people that are saying it. And that doesn't mean that... Um, People who aren't top of the game can't say it. it, just it's endemic. But these are people, I use an example, because they're really, really good people. And they're going, yeah, I just, I don't feel that my work's good enough. And I look at it and I look at my work and I never really like it. And it's interesting because I look at things and I just go, I see all the flaws on how I should have done it better. And that might be what drives you to do a better job next time but it also can drive some bad behavior. So anyway, I've spoken quite a bit. I'm gonna go, if you wanna vote on imposter syndrome. So imposter syndrome, I don't know what the classic definition is, but the de definitions where you don't feel you're good enough and you're gonna get found out. 
So, and it, it works for um, professional modelers because they're doing it for a job. So this is their job. And at some point, someone's going to find out they're not really as good as they think they are or they say they are because they're doing it as a profession. And someone's going to point it out. And it's basically you're an imposter. You're not good enough to be doing the job you're doing. But it works for hobbies as well. You know, it works people who are, you know, might exhibit, or put it on social media. They feel like an imposter. My work's not good enough to go on here. So, yeah. Right. Back to the chat. And Daz is still just putting in loads and loads of Daz. I'm out filling the gaps between the solid bits that I'd done and the um, edge of the rail, just so it's seamless. And you can smooth Sculpey with a wet finger really easily. It does dry your hands out. I do use a lot of hand cream. You can put glove on, I suppose, but I don't like the texture of glove leaves sometimes. So, Petrick. Oh, another book, definitely. Darth Buzz. I have loads of Sculpey oven baked clay, but have seen insane fear of using it. Air dried all the time for me. I actually use it at the moment for the first time ever. I've got some really old pots. I threw out the magic sculpt, it had gone solid. I've got two really old pots of epoxy sculpt, which is an epoxy sculpting clay, which I'm using for scratch building my original mecha contest, Griffin. And I haven't sculpted in years. Like school was probably the last time I sculpted. It's been a bit challenging, I'm not very happy. And because you have to wait for it to go off, I do a bit and then I have to leave it or I just keep squashing bits I've already done, which is annoying. Um, so, let's see. And I, yeah, and also I'm, I'm modeling with plastic in there as well, so I can't just shove it in an oven or I'll melt more plastic. So Ravenson Express says, the modeling clay from Bozeno is called Modulier, Modulier? And it's air drying, model medium too. Hope I'll find some purpose when I can use it. I would say where I would use Daz clay, anything that requires stonework, because you can carve it when it's wet and you can carve it when it's dry. It is quite easy to sand. It's very easy. You can put it on thin, as long as you put water down first, you can put it on thin on the outside of an MDF building or a card building if it's a well-braced, sealed card. You can use it anywhere, really. It's great for scenery. You can press things into it while it's drying so you can get a texture. Chris Nevard, who does some beautiful work, if you haven't seen his model railways, go check him out, they're beautiful. He uses it for all his yards and he stipples it with a brush to get a texture. Does beautiful work with it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely very versatile. It will shrink though and it will crack and that's where you have to be careful. Don't let it dry too quickly. Certainly don't, you know, hair dry it to speed it up. Keep the damp cloths on it. These are all just slightly damp, probably not that damp at this point. And um, just make sure everything is just, you know, slow and it'll be fine. I 3D printed these bases for the buildings that were just up to um, give me something to put the clay up to so that I would make a nice, neat foundation for the buildings to sit on. I already had the models I made, so it made sense. Right, let's have a look what everyone said. Okay, wow. Right, so where are we? I'm miles back. Um, so thanks for the link, Digger. Um, Kathy's very modest, yeah. So, been thinking of World War II bunker says Kevicus of 135th scale. Should I use Plaster Paris or Daz? I cannot afford 3D printing. I'm not sure for a bunker. Um, I'm not quite sure I'd use either of those, to be honest, so I may not be the best person to answer that. Um, but the difference, Plaster Paris is sloppy, Daz is firmer, so you can mould it. So it really depends whether you're moulding or slopping, I guess. Digger's definitely selling my book. Thank you, Digger. Mark Wilson, recently in work, we had a speaker talking about imposter syndrome. Until then, I thought it was just me that was had my doubts. Now I understand. I actually think it's almost anybody on social media at some point will feel this way. Um, it's just the way social media drives people now, I think. So Tim's giving Kevicus first some, could you make a mould of slab sections for the bunker walls and then cast them with plaster? That might work, yeah, because plaster is very sloppy. 
um, <laughs> Legend Spatial Train Time Machine. I'd like to do a sci fi train at some point. Um, so Monique says she knows what I mean. Hopefully that's right. Tam's in. First XPS foam is probably your best bet for doing bunkers. I was thinking I wouldn't use Daz Clay or, um, or Plaster of Paris except as a surface to something else. So if you look on this, it's a thin skim surface to everything else that I'm doing. And that's, uh, that's definitely where it comes in to be used. I don't think we actually know what you're doing with your bunker kevicus and that might be the problem what it is you want to um what it is you want to do with it so might need some further discussion which might be further down but he says he was thinking about carving them with foam board for mold not sure what to do to be honest i'm not quite sure what you're trying to do with it i think is my problem bye vinager you've probably gone already but bye um thanks for dropping in Right, Monique, definitely now I know what you're talking about. Yes, right. Norm, I have issues in my work due to being a perfectionist. I'm my own worst critic. And I think that is part of the problem. When I was paid to do a job that I wasn't that bothered at, being an accountant, I was able to leave it at the door at five. I never really worried about it, except maybe the people side, when I wasn't at work. And they paid me and I did my job and I did it well, but that was it and I did a good job. When you're doing creation for your job, your whole self becomes bound up into that. And it's really brought out my perfectionist tendencies and my task driven, which is why I don't take enough breaks because I haven't finished my tasks and I put too much on my shoulders of what I want to do. And being a perfectionist, I, you know, I, people don't write nasty things generally on YouTube. I get comments on how I could have done it better, but they're not nasty. But I don't think anyone could write anything worse than I already think about my stuff or have already thought about it. What people do is make me think of things I haven't thought of. And, and I appreciate that, actually. Someone um, today, I think it was this morning, said, on oh, my Mandalorian diorama, your cotton hangings aren't moving enough in the wind. And I thought, what do you mean? And then I thought, oh, yeah, the cloak's got a massive wind on it, you know, Maybe the cotton should too. So yeah, and I'd never even thought about it. And that video has been out for years. It's the first person to say it. Um, and then you go, oh yeah, that's a good point. So Scott says, no idea was my vote, but I'm not working anymore due to declining health. So I don't think imposter syndrome is just about when you're working. I think hobbyists get it too. Um, when they put things forward on social media, um, they kind of expect it to perhaps not do as well as other people's it is probably where it comes out in a hobby. Big Larson, I went 30. So Big Lars, I went 30. I successfully used Daz Clay to complete a sandbag wall system for my World War One railroad. It's over four foot long. Wow, one sandbag at a time. That was dedication. That was a lot of sandbags that you made. George 21, problem I feel is it's because life nowadays is too fast paced due to technology. There's too much content to consume and far too little time to absorb it. I feel that um, I'm actually looking forward to YouTube not being my main job so that I can actually go back to doing a different schedule for the videos. My problem is I wanted to get to 100,000 subscribers and I haven't. And I'm still a bit driven by that achievement that I haven't reached and actually I've stalled my channel got it lost more people in the last week than it gained um, so actually I'm losing more subscribers than I'm gaining at the moment which is really sad when you want to grow and I put three or four videos out um, some of them short some of them long and you know they're getting views but I'm losing subscribers and I think, well, I guess a lot of people subscribe for railways and there hasn't been a lot of railways apart from live streams just because I was stalled on all my projects. That's about to change if I get my new job because it will be a miniature railway and you'll get content from that on the channel instead. But what surprises me is that a lot of the people who are on my channel have been in the growth recently. I haven't been doing model railways for that time. I've been doing mostly sci-fi. So I don't know. Someone said maybe YouTube were having a clear out of fraudulent accounts, but... We'll see. 
Um, but yeah, I think, Jewel 21, I often think of that poem, what is this world if full of care we have no time to stand and stare? And I walk around the same park twice every lunchtime and I try and look at the leaves and the trees and the dogs and the people. I try and observe because otherwise I just turn inwards and start thinking about modelling again. Um, and I think it is important just to absorb sometimes that outdoorsness. Um, so yeah, Tamsin says, look up the train tutor. He did a video on building bunkers. You just need to scale up a bit for one to 35. Thanks, Tamsin. Um, I've seen a few videos done over the years, but because it's not something I particularly model, I, I've not, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you the names of the people. So thank you for that. Phil Sells, he suffers with imposter syndrome very badly when it comes to his skills. He did really didn't put out there that much, despite getting loads of praise with a few shows, I still find all the flaws. That's exactly where I am. And you know, one of the things I've learned having a team over the years as a manager was there's many ways to do the same thing and your way isn't the only right way. And yet I don't have that grace when it comes to myself almost. I don't cut myself the slack that I would cut in for others. And people sort of say, well, you know, being self-employed must be lovely. And I'm like, I'm a really bad boss. I'm <laughs> a really bad boss. Um, but yeah, I I do this for a living, so I have to put my stuff out there. But I have put videos out, one or two of them, just thinking, I hated this diorama. I absolutely hated it. I might have had an error, something went wrong. And it's very common. I was watching Boy Lie Hobby Times. He's one of my favourite. He's got to half a million. So well done. He really deserves it. But it's a huge amount of work. And he'd done another resin one that had gone wrong. Um, everybody's resin pores goes wrong. Yeah, it's just one of those things about deep pore resin. It's really fussy. Even people like Thalasso Hobby, who um, they do it almost for a living and they are absolutely the king of deep pores. Even they occasionally have one that goes wrong. And he'd got one that had set overnight and it cracked, it heated up. And he managed to more or less fix it. But, um, you know, even people like that, I see the flaws in their video. And I don't know whether that keeps him up at night that he had a flaw or if the fact he mostly fixed it and got the video out there is a win. It, it comes down to your own personal makeup. But I did an underwater scene and I got a bubble in it. I tried to fix it and it was rubber water and it pulled slightly away from the container it was in. So there's a slight silvering there. And it's got this really weird bubble with stab marks through it effect in the corner, which some people say looks great and they're fine with it. it it's kind of all I see when I see that piece now. It's the floor. Um, someone commented, oh, you should put more veg in. And I was like, oh, I was going for an Egyptian look, but you know, I get where you're coming from. And, you know, I look at it and I can see all the comments people make are really good and constructive, but they're then the lens at which I look at things. And the more you put that out there, the more you get people looking and making comments. And they're not bad and they're great. And I've always said behind every criticism is a kernel of truth, no matter how rude the criticism is. And sometimes on the internet, there is no kernel of truth. But actually in 90% of the comments I get that are pointing something out, apart from the second blooming lightsaber on Ahsoka Tano, you proved to me she didn't drop the second one off camera. You proved me that. But apart from the second lightsaber on Ahsoka Tano Clone Wars scene, which if you haven't seen that video, like I have a thousand comments telling me that she didn't drop two lightsabers. <laughs> apart from that, I don't bother responding anymore. Um, in the book, apparently she did drop both. And that's just what I stick to. Um, but apart from that, you know, most criticisms are actually very valid, things I've missed. And if I was the kind of person who went back and reworked, I would go back and do it. Oh, top tip here. I'm putting in sculpt mould and paint and it's going against my backdrop that's painted. Cling film stops me painting my sky by mistake. So I've got cling film around everything because all of these are coming in or out at this point deliberately. But you can make it so the cling films just pullable up behind and it stops anything getting onto the sky you don't want to be on there because your sky should stay white. You really don't want it to sort of get stained with brown paint or anything like that because sometimes it will show. Right, let's see what everyone else says. Okay. So, Scott, see there's a thing, the perfection I can imagine has always been beyond my ability to humanly achieve. That's why I like 3D printing, because you can actually get the perfection. 
that I can't achieve with my hands. I can design it to be exactly square. I can't carve anything square to save my life. But I see people agreeing with Phil, Darth Buzz and yeah, others. So Tim says he wonders if it's more of a personality trait than anything else. I have it in both my real job and my hobbies. I wonder if a hobby that requires attention to detail, um, such as scale modelling, can. And not everybody does it. And one of the reasons I like scenery is it doesn't have a lot of attention to details. You can just slop things on, like I'm slopping on this sculptor mould now. And um, I think one of the things about it is it may attract people who have that personality trait of attention to detail because scale modelling is about detail and, and maybe therefore you see it in the hobby. Dark Side Scenics, I think that being creative is a blessing and a curse. Most creators are very hard on themselves. On YouTube, you might get 99 positive comments, but you find you focus on just the one negative. I am so 100% behind that comment. I could probably tell you most of the negative comments I could not tell you the positive ones. And I'm trying to comment more on Instagram because I realise the danger is nobody makes the good comments. They just go, that's good. And all you then get is a weight of negative comments. And um, yeah, it's really, really difficult because that's human nature to try and understand the criticism and absorb it. Andy T, please give me a shout out here in Western Supermare. Hi, Andy in Western. Wow great part of the world I remember going to the sea once at Weston and I was like I was quite young I was like mum where's the sea and she goes oh it's out there dear and it was like out in the distance Weston has one of those massive massive long beaches doesn't it that um <laughs> it comes up a long way but yeah great place um ooh. right oh I, I'm massively down and every time I scroll it takes me to the bottom right Giant boar monster. They say everyone works more now than they did in the medieval days, believe it or not. I tend to believe it. Being self-employed, I, I used to come home and my hobby was my release for my job. And I think about it when I wasn't, you know, I was going for my walk at lunchtime and I think about it. Now I come from my modelling and I make myself sit down for pointless and not log on to the computer. And instead I just post my social media and do stuff like that. But I stop for pointless almost every evening to make myself stop. And then I get the computer out and do work all evening as well. And I work all weekend. So I've worked all this weekend and I'll work all next weekend and I'll work all the weekend after. And I'm really looking to going back into full time employment. Not because I don't think it will be many hours. It's going to be a very pressured job. But because it puts my day job now back into the hobby slot, so I'm not doing the same thing all day. Um, so yeah, that is definitely, I can believe people were more. And also in medieval days, when it went dark, you went to bed because you couldn't do anything. You didn't have the light. Whereas here, we can burn the midnight oil and it is a danger. You know, I've had a cold this week. It's a rundown. I've worked too hard cold. It's not I caught a cold and I've got, it's just that I'm tired and run down. Um, from just working too hard. So there we go. Um, Kevika says, Kathy, I think you're Asian. You should stand in your own truth. You're a top girl. We all hate our own work. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not saying this actually to make people give me compliments because, you know, that's not the point of this. Um, I'm saying it so that people can understand the. It, I, I see it a lot on Instagram and whatever social media you're on, Instagram's the only one I really go on. Um, apart from Discord, I love Discord, it's actually my favourite. Um, but I see a lot of people being very self-critical about their work and talking about imposter syndrome. And I think because I've got a big job coming up that I'm so daunted about, I've been really feeling I'm inadequate to do that job. And that's what's triggering this for me at the moment. And also YouTube hasn't worked out. I've not been particularly good at it. And that knocks your confidence, quite honestly. And that's not about your modelling. Um, being in a business and doing modelling is not the same as just enjoying modelling. And that, I'm looking forward to the day job so that modelling becomes, it will still be my day job, but I won't be doing the modelling day to day that much. I will be directing other people's and I'll be designing stuff. Absolutely love designing stuff, more than actually modelling it sometimes. I've got many designs that never see the light of day. Never get finished. Um, 
So I feel like continued. I then get really self-conscious executive dysfunction kicks in combined with all the self-predicted failure and I lose all inclination to do more work. So that's the thing, Phil, we're doing it full time is I just have to get it out there. And it has driven me to finish projects that I would not have otherwise finished. I've got a lot of projects on the side. So Titanfall, the robot, uh, the mech, I mean, bless him. He's, he was the first thing practically I printed on my Pyopoly Phenom back in 2020. Well, actually it'd be 2019 or something because I got it before lockdown. Um, it was almost the first thing I printed and he's still in pieces on the floor. I primed him a couple of weeks ago. My Titanfall helmet's over there. I just start so many projects. But the one thing, once I've put them on Discord and I've put them on YouTube and I've put them on Instagram, I feel like I have to finish them because it's my job now. It does force me to finish things that probably wouldn't get finished. And it is the one downside because you can end up hating your work because you've got to finish it. And that's why one of the main reasons I do loads of small projects. I can't hate it in the time I'm doing on it. I can dislike how it turns out or see how I can do it better, but I don't get so fed up of it. Port de Norwich was getting close on eight weeks. It was getting really close on dislike um, by the end. But yeah, um, there we go. Right. Um, Kevicus, I will look for that vid there. Tamsin, yeah, it's a good, it's a good one. Monique went to Weta Works. I'm so jealous she shared a video of it. It's really good. Um, they said they were always looking for new talent. Guess what I said? I'm just another amateur compared to you guys. <laughs> Monique. <laughs> yeah, that's the trouble. We all just think we're amateurs. And I mean, I would, I would, you know, if I get my new job, I won't be an amateur. I, and I'm not an amateur now. I'm paid to model in some ways, though. You might argue as a YouTuber, I'm paid to do videos, which is slightly different. Um, but yeah, we look at people at Weta and I follow some of the guys at Weta who also do cosplay and other things. And they're such nice guys, but they're so talented. And I don't feel talented like that. I would say I'm not an artist, I'm a craftsperson. So I can't really draw. What I'm good at is crafting things. And it is a distinction and I'm definitely not fishing for compliments here. I can't draw. I did AS level art, but I did paper sculpture. I did block prints. I didn't really do drawing. I, I'm not an artist in the classic sense, but I am definitely somebody who likes crafting, who likes working with my hands. And I think there is a slight difference. Um, Westwood Science Store Studios. There are techniques to employ to ease the feelings associated with IS, imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome can lead to anxiety and depression and probably headaches. <laughs> good point. Some good literature available for self-help. Um, if people want to look for some good stuff that's happening, the Cerulean Project, Cerulean the Colour, C-E-R-U-L-A-E-A-N, somewhere in there, might have got too many A's in there, Cerulean Project. He does a whole, he's running at the moment, a whole build something, and he has a colour for the year, and he talks about mental health. And I think he might have mentioned imposter syndrome recently, and I had the flashback to the, uh, the guy, would I have heard of you? Oh no, probably not, you know. <laughs> Oh, but you've been on TV, Kathy. kind of conversation. And I thought very much about, um, you know, and I would have done it this year if I wasn't already doing the OMC Griffin and not having had finished that yet. Um, but that's a really interesting, it's mostly sort of sci-fi and other sort of scale models. Um, all, and I think the colour this year is orange. So everything's got orange in it somewhere and some, lots of hover vehicles and things. I don't really, I just follow it a bit on Instagram. I don't go into it a lot. And he's posting every week discussions on mental health in the hobby. And he's he's trying to raise awareness and he sells a book that raises awareness within that book, which I haven't bought and I keep meaning to. There are pages about mental health awareness within it. And I think that's a really good thing. So Edward says, I work for a software company and surveys show that over half the programmers have imposter syndrome, including me. Oh, Edward, that's fascinating. It's fascinating how we don't seem to reward. We don't, I don't know what it is. Do we just not tell people the right things now? Um, or do we have such a high disconnect? I remember a story from years ago and it was, I don't know, someone talking about going to the gym. And a typical 
the way you do. She was admiring everyone else's figures and feeling how fat and flabby she was. And she was particularly admiring this woman in the mirror in a non-pervy way, going, oh, she's really fit and toned. I wish I looked like her. And then she moved slightly and realised it was her in the mirror and she'd been admiring herself. But when she looked at herself directly, she was fat and flabby. But when she didn't realise it was her, she was fit and toned. And I feel we all have that, starting to have that disconnect in social media between and just in creativity. Before, you know, before social media, I did modelling and I went to a competition and I got judged and I might win a trophy in the category I was in or something. And if I wanted to go to a bigger competition, I could get judged in a bigger pool. Um, and the biggest pool I would have got judged in probably was just Britain. You know, I wouldn't have gone, I could have gone to IPMS or one of these and got judged. And I could do a kind of a thing that, you know, yes, I put myself in, but it would always be a relatively small pool. Now you judge yourself against everybody on the internet. And I follow some amazing creators, but they may only create one thing. And then I look at Boy Lai Hobby Times and he's knocking out a great diorama every week. And I'm just like, you know, people can do great stuff really quickly. And then there's other people that, you know, probably once a year put out some stunning stuff. And it's a hobby, so they obviously haven't got the time. And it's fascinating. You just don't know how much time people are able to put into their hobby. But you only ever see the best of what they do, unless it's whip posts. But quite often you only see people's finished products. Um, back to Dallas Clay for a second. I didn't want my dock that's removable so I can carry this through the door without it clunking. Um, that is a little bridge front. I didn't want it to stick to the main dock. So I put a bit of acetate exactly the right height between the two, because Dallas Clay won't stick to acetate, was the theory, and it doesn't. And I then... I, I, smooth the clay down to that level and just ran, used a knife around the edges of it. And I knew then that there was a division because I could feel the top of the plastic just slightly out the clay. But I wanted it dead smooth so it would be flat and level both sides. And I could just tell that it wasn't connected because of the acetate. So Phil Wright says, imposter syndrome is very prevalent amongst this neurodivergence. I'm not quite sure what a neurodivergent is. You're going to have to explain that one further down. So Giant Boar Monster says, a really good channel is Pierce Film Productions, documentary clips, movie miniatures through the decades, interviews with the top models of the day. They'll give you some ideas. Oh, brilliant. Pierce Film Productions. I'll have to remember that in like an hour's time and look it up, but thank you. Um, right, so Tamsin's helping Kevicus with his bunker. Giant Ball Monster's got a definitely from Polite. Ooh, another vote for, from Darth Buzz. So obviously they're a good one. So Pierce Film Productions videos. Mark Wilson says, I put out a lot of content on Facebook. I get a lot of content uh, comments. Sometimes I comment, I don't think my work is good enough. People just say, oh, you're just saying that to get attention, but I'm not. No, I'm not saying it now to get attention. I'm saying it now to have a discussion about something that I think is actually quite crippling for creators. I think it's very crippling for creators. Um, you know, I have been more unstable, let's put, call it, when I'm a creator than when my job wasn't determined by my creativity. When my job was just being an accountant, very little creativity. In fact, creative accounting is frowned upon. Um, then it didn't really matter. And it was my hobby. And the only person I really had to please was myself. But I wasn't invested in it in the same way. My money came in very nicely without any impact on my creativity. In fact, it was my release from my fairly boring job. Whereas now, my creativity and my self-worth are wrapped up far more tightly because it is my job. And um, I don't think people understand that when you're saying your work isn't good enough, you're not doing it to say attention. Um, I mean, I keep putting stuff out on the original Mecca group and I don't think my original Mecca is that good. I'm not really feeling it. And as a result, I think because I'm not feeling it, 
I'm making comments going, and I'm not fishing for a compliment for someone to say, oh, it looks amazing. What I'm saying is I generally feel dissatisfied with this. This is the first time I've done a lot of this sculpting. I would do it very differently if I was approaching this a second time. And I probably will do a video on scratch building versus 3D print design because I found it really challenging to scratch build. It's just, yeah. So Ben Ives says, nobody hates me more than myself, particularly at the moment, been having some really crappy thoughts. It's a spiral, isn't it? I can really spiral down very quickly about um, thoughts. And I, I remember chatting to someone who had had severe depression and been to a workshop that was about changing the way you think. And he said the difference between someone who's depressed and someone who isn't in this workshop's very simplistic terms at the time was an old person spills the soup on the floor and just goes, oh, I've spilled the soup. A person who's in a vicious cycle down spills the soup on the floor and goes, I spilled the soup. I'm a horrible person. I spilled the soup. Nobody will love me because I've spilled the soup. I'm unworthy. You know, I'm unlovable because I've spilled the soup. It spirals. And I can see those, I am far more prone to those spirals down. And I've had to learn to walk away sometimes. I've actually just gone around and oh, rang my mum up and got her to come round when I dropped Mandalorian and smashed it on the floor. First thing I did was ring my mum, mum, I can't cope. Um, but I really just had to learn to walk away sometimes because I can spiral down very quickly when something's going wrong and I break something and I'm on a time crunch and I'm like, I haven't got time to redo this. What do I do? And I, I yeah. And it's so difficult. I really struggle with those thoughts. Um, and I understand. And all I can say is if that's where you are, I guess you need, you need to work out how to get out of it and get help. And I, I'm still struggling with it and I don't ask for help enough. I know. Um, because that's just not the way I'm being brought up or what I do. But I think there is, it becomes very dangerous and I can see I'm starting to get into that and I'm trying to pull myself back now out of it a lot more and to catch myself when I do those thoughts. But I really struggle. I really struggle with that. Um, Mark Wilson, I definitely have imposter syndrome. Oh, sorry, Mark. It's not a good thing to have, is it? Um, so Split Rock, hello everyone. Hi, you've just come into a really deep, meaningful conversation about imposter syndrome. Um, double O Neil. Hi, Kathy. It's great to catch you on here. I'm enjoying the stream. What do you do to slow your day down so the world isn't so busy for you? I go for a walk at lunchtime. I get out every lunchtime, rain or shine. Generally every lunchtime. If it's absolutely peeing down, I don't go out. No, but I go out every lunchtime and I walk around the park twice. I normally go with my mum, who's very slow, and I leave her on a bench and I go around an extra time because she's done her knee in. Um, and sometimes my sister, who's handicapped, she'll come with me. Um, but mum often doesn't come because her knee's playing up too much. And I just walk around the park. I often see people, I beam at everybody, I try and smile at every single person, just to annoy them. No, I try and smile at every single person so that I'm smiling. And I do different things in the evening to the day. So the day is modelling time, it's physical modelling time. In the evening, it's computer design and I work on different products um I'm also doing my accounts at the moment which I hate doing for an accountant um it's great and I try and split my day I make sure I have the hour off for pointless and I generally have been cooking supper as well you know in that hour and so it takes a bit more than an hour by the time I've cooked supper although mum made it tonight which is nice and um you know I just try and get away from it um, and that's, but it's, I'm still very much in my own bubble and that's why I want to go into a full-time job. I miss the team. I miss the being around people. I am an office bunny. I've worked in an office since I was 21. I'm 50 next year. That's a huge amount of training of how to work in an office and I miss it inherently. I miss that buzz of talking to people. I'm an extrovert. So for me, I'm going to change my job, is the short answer, because I don't think this has been the healthiest time for me. Um, so, Tamsin, my imposter syndrome is about my figure and model painting. Friends at my gaming club tell me I'm really good, but I'm nowhere near the standard of people I watch on YouTube. Again, that's so difficult, isn't it? I mean, some of those people on YouTube do it full time. 
And, you know, I, I don't think I know that much. And then I chat to, I was chatting to Erin, who's one of the patrons, as a, um, and I tutor him once a month, I do it every couple of months. And I find when he has a question, I've normally got an answer because I've done it like, well or badly at some point, but I always have an opinion on it. And I realise how much I've done. I had to do a lot of stuff with the book that I'd not done before, like plaster roads and things. So I've now done most things, not necessarily well and not to a great standard, but I've done most things. And yet, I'm nowhere near the standard of people I watch on YouTube. I, I mean, I can't paint figures for anything. I just did a video on how to paint figures and I thought they looked, you know, pretty poor at the end. But it was on quick painting figures to fill up rather than to be centerpieces. And some of them came out a lot better than others. Um, it's a difficult one, isn't it? I think we are our own worst critics quite often. And I think the truth is you have to find somebody who's... Um, are good. I've actually joined the Solihull Scale Modelling Society over the summer and it's been really good to go and just, and I took along my second dynasty spaceship to show them and promptly all the landing gear fell off um, the, the doors. But you know, it was good to chat to people and to show them models. And I think you have to work out people who have the right standard so they're not like your mum saying you're great, just scratching a crack in here on the video. Um, but you have to have people and then you just have to believe them when they tell you you're good because I think we need to reset because the people on YouTube are at the top of the game that's why they're on YouTube and there's always someone better than you always that's the thing there's someone better than them it's always someone better unless they've won the crystal brush or the golden demon or whatever it is there's someone better and I think you know the tool is You've just got to just got to admit that none of us might be at the top, but that doesn't mean we're at the bottom. So, Tris, welcome. So, loads of people arriving. Hi, Vez. Um, so, Tim says he doesn't even try with the level some people are at. I know we're at, but I do know my worst critic. I can tell you every single floor and all my own stuff. The other thing is, you stare at your stuff when you're doing it far more than some other people. You know, you really do. Um, oh, hang on. I've just scrolled down too far. Right, I'm going to read all these. Right. Oh, right. Sorry, if I scroll, it takes me all to the bottom. So, where we got to? Giant Ball Monster. If I was a content creator, I'd branch out to other streaming video platforms. YouTube won't be around forever, especially since the problems seem to increase the time go on and build up audience elsewhere. Just name another streaming video platform that you can go out to that does long form videos like YouTube. There aren't any, I don't think. That's the trouble. I'm just joined Vero to get away from Instagram. I've got like three photos on there. I'm going see my flashback Fridays, which I do about once every two months. Um, and I'm going to go and start putting them on there to come through to the same. But the trouble with Instagram, there's no real alternative. I hate Instagram's new algorithm, but there's nothing really else. The trouble with um, YouTube, there is nothing else that has that reach. There's just nothing else. And that is the problem. Um, and we're on the studio. Everyone, please check your YouTube. It has unsubscribed me off some channels. Don't understand why. I even uploaded my own video. Wow. Um, I've still got about, I've got about 300 people I'm subbed to. So I don't think I've lost any. Um, Tim says, the lasso hobby is amazing. I'm in awe of his casual 18 kilograms of resin now, Paul. I know. If you haven't seen the lasso hobby, go look at him. He does amazing deep pour resin stuff. Um, okay, so these are all responding to stuff I said ages ago. Norm, but the bubble worked out fine. It's an air bubble in the water, probably a fish fart. It was a fountain, it was a statue fart. That's where it was coming from. Um, Monique, when I painted the backdrop on my N-gauge layout, there's one area that I feel is not good enough. I hate the backdrop on this, but thankfully by the time I put loads of stuff on, no one notices. And that's what I'd say about backdrops. Nobody looks at the backdrop. That's the point of a backdrop. It shouldn't be intrusive. So you look at it um, and, and you say you can't help but look at that area. Nobody else probably even notices it. And that is what gets me. 
Um, I, like you, look at the one area because it catches my eye because it bugs me. Um, Bez says, resin can be a bugger sometimes. I had to do seven layers on a sixth horse mould in case it caught fire. The heat can get intense. I use epoxy plast deep pour for my deep pours now and it takes 72 hours to cure. If it takes over two days to cure, it's basically quite a cool um, reaction and doesn't put the heat out. And I use that whenever I need to do a really deep pour. And so far it's been good, but it's not cheap. Mark Warren, Scale Mark Models. Social media is a rather new thing for me and only started an Instagram account a few months ago. Have been prodded to do so by my sister-in-law as I didn't think people would want to see my models. That again is imposter syndrome, isn't it? Nobody wants to see mine. I look at a huge amount of models and I can find something that inspires me in all of them. I have people say, oh, I'm not as good as you, da, 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 da. And I'm like, that's not what I look for in a model. I'm not looking for technical proficiency. I'm looking for inspiration. I'm looking for the content you did. I'm looking for just you talking about it and just enjoying the ride with you. I don't need you to be perfect. And I think that's where actually most people are. Frank words. I write poetry, had imposter syndrome until I started writing in real time to a YouTube music reactor, just relying on my gut feeling my likes have skyrocketed. That's interesting. Yeah, it's, um, it's interesting, isn't it? Um, I, I'm looking forward to coming out of YouTube as a full time and just doing what I fancy, my passion projects and those going on YouTube. And if they're not popular, they're not popular. Um, but yeah, you know, sometimes it's that gut feeling and doing what you love is what people react to. Darth Buzz, please remember to leave a thumbs up. Yep, please like it and thumbs up, folks. Um, Giant Ball Monster, speaking of cling film, I think one could use it for water. Might be tricky gluing it down permanently, never tried. I often use it as the base under the water because if it gets stuck in there, um, it's fine. Uh, my sculptor mould that I'm pulling off here is because the buildings didn't fit and it's still slightly damp, so it just comes off really easily. That's why it looks like that, because I'm doing all this within a day or two and the sculptor mould was taking three or four days to dry out just because it was was not a hot time of year. Obviously, it, was, it missed the main hot summer. And actually, even in the really hot 38 degree weather, my kitchen where this is was probably only about 24. Um... Big Lars Owen30, putting a project online do, definitely pushes you to finish at some point. It does. People sometimes ask what happened to that. I feel a bit bad about my Titanfall helmet. Keichel on Thingiverse produced it and I still haven't done it. I do need to finish that and my Titanfall. I've, I've got 20 projects that are on the list of I must finish. Um, but there we go. So Tim thinks that he doesn't find social media pushes him, the stuff he's posted up and abandoned later if he didn't think it was working. I think the trouble is I generally want to get it out as a video so I do finish. But I often, I used to abandon a lot more projects than I do now. So Mark says, where's my artistic side come from? Mark, his is from his granddad building model kits. Um, mm, I would say both of my parents were probably stifled from doing art as children, it just wasn't the thing. Um, but my dad got me into railways and my mum, I think probably would have liked art had it been allowed at her school. It's just, I don't know, but I've just always loved art. Um, I did AS level arts, which I did study it up to, AS level's like half an A level. They couldn't timetable a full A level. Um, I just loved it. I thought about doing a foundation year, but I didn't, I went and became an accountant to earn money instead which has still been in good stead for the last couple of years living off my savings so david off i think i was lucky i know i'm good at my chosen field engineering 3d models because i've frequently requested to do jobs that no one else could do and generally manage them with no problems that's brilliant and actually when i did accounting i i i wasn't arrogant but i knew i i was a contractor and i went in my fixed broken departments so i knew i was good to a certain level and the things I'm not good at, don't get me wrong, but I, I had that feeling about accountancy. But doing it for 25 years as a job, I had a lot of experience. And the thing that really freaks me out about the new job coming up in the tourist attraction, being in charge of it, 
no one's really built one. Well, there's like four or five of them around the world. And I've not built one and I've got to be in charge of building something I've never done before. And that freaks me out. It's a bit out of my comfort zone. And then you say model making though, you're just an amateur. And actually that's brilliant because actually that's where we should be really if it's a hobby. Um, Mark Wilson says, only recently I've learned about imposter syndrome. When did it actually become a thing? I don't know, I, I learned about it in the last year or so. I think a lot of people, um, I think a lot of people, it's been creeping up a lot on people with social media. So I think the more prevalent social media becomes, the more imposter syndrome is being talked about. Um, 18 chats, it will normally remind you to hit the like button. So Phil's answering my question from like 20 minutes ago. Neurodivergent is basically anybody on the ADHD, the autism and other neurological divergences spectrum. There are types of hobbies attract our love for attention to detail, but other traits can hold us back. I would just say I'm a task person, not a people person. So I'm very task orientated compared to some of my friends that are in people orientated. I know I will put a task, but that doesn't mean... So I was a manager and over the years that I did Myers-Briggs and all these where they do whatever, I centred a lot as I got older. And I think that's one of the things, if you're going to work in an office and be with people all the time, you centre up because that's just what you have to do to survive as a good manager. Um, but yeah, it's it, not everybody wants to do that. And I think, to be honest, we, we force people to do too much management. We should let the people who enjoy doing it do it. Um, so Monique says, I agree because we constantly judge ourselves. We hinder our creative ability. Exactly. And that's why I mentioned it. Because there are times where I think I shouldn't take this new job because I'm not good enough. I actually think to myself, I'm not good enough to do this. Like, where are they going to find someone who's into model railways, who's into running, who's run departments, who's um, also used to um, delivering projects to time and budgets, Vagal and Budget's done them a lot, um, you know, who's got wider than just the railways, because not just railways, there has to be a lot of other moving things, who's got the innovative stuff that when they have to design a working water hose scenario for Japan, they can do that. You know, there's a limited number of people that are going to do this who are based in the UK. Um, so yeah, I look at it and I go, my rational brain tells me it's the perfect job. I've been led here. YouTube is slamming the door behind me. I'm on to like, I'm shrinking on my subscribers. There's a definite slamming door. And if you believe like I do, that there's guidance in life, I'm being guided here so much. And yet I've still got that voice going, mm, what do you think you are that you're doing it? And it is hindering. It is. I have to learn to kick that. So Polite, he's been lighting HO model cars with LEDs for 20 years now. And right from the start, I was better than many professionals a day. I also had a part-time job with it, but I never had the opportunity to make videos like they're popular today. Meanwhile, nobody's interested in my models anymore, not even my subscribers, and I'm considering closing my channel. I think YouTube, I would say my problem on YouTube is that I'm not into video editing. And so my videos are quite dry and they're not YouTubeable videos like a lot of people. I don't inject the humour, the witty things. I did a collab with James and I look at his video and I look at my video, very different styles. But he loves video editing and I hate video editing and it comes across. But I would say, if you're not enjoying YouTube, don't do it. It's a hobby. It's a hobby. If you don't enjoy it, don't do it. And I will carry on doing YouTube because I, I still like putting stuff out there. But I'm not, I'm not going to allow it to be the prevalence in my life that it has had and the sway it's had. Scott talking to Phil, that clits it either or question where the correct answer is yes. Is being neurodivergent a help or a hindrance? Yes. That's true. Um, there are good points and bad points to every personality trait. You just have to be in the right job and hobby for your personality trait. So, King Fox Junction, how long does that clay take to dry? Depends how thick it is, depends how damp your cloths are on top. I tried to make mine dry over two or three days so that it would dry nice and smoothly and easily. The top wouldn't dry quickly and then crack when the bottom underneath dried and shrunk. And that's your problem. So you want it to be taking a day or two to dry. You don't want it to dry overnight. But seriously, if I'd left the cloths off, that would have dried 
I suspect overnight no problem but probably within six hours or so because it's a thin layer and it does dry quite quickly but if you let it dry too quickly it is the top layer can dry it becomes it's shrunk it's fixed and then the layer underneath shrinks and the top's like mm, and it causes problems so you want it to be slightly slower so Draxitella's Paradise this is deeply satisfied for you to watch you build this I shall suggest to a friend who also likes model building. Oh, thank you. This is a very different style to my YouTube channel because this is mostly time lapse. So you actually get to see how long it takes to do this. Um, and it's sped up. It varies. I generally just edit it and then to it comes to an hour and a half. So it varies each time. But I think this was about eight hours or something, seven or eight hours long form when I first looked at it. And I'd done a bit of editing by that point. And within that time, there's things that I've done that maybe didn't make it on camera that have been cut out as well. <laughs> Kathy will never catch up with the chat lol. Oh, if I scroll, I don't get down anymore. Um, so Big Lar says it's 12 to 24 hours. I think it does depend on you. You do want, do want the damp cloths according to Mel the Train Tutor. I am not arguing with Mel. That guy knows what he's talking about. I don't. Um, Hi, oh, yeah, King Fox Junction. Um, so Tamsin, if ever I have to do a deep resin pause, I'll probably go to some of my old work colleagues for help. The teams in the anatomy laboratory in the Grant Museum of Zoology at UCL did them all the time. Yeah, it's about picking the right resin. It really is. And they'll be able to advise you the best place um, to get the right resin for whatever it is you're doing. Deep pores need a specific resin. And one of the problems is people do use the wrong type. Phil, this has been an interesting chat this evening, but I really would have expected. Tune in next month for Static Graphs, the origins of the universe and the meaning of life. Well, we normally do Doctor Who about now, so I, you know we've covered some of those things, uh, origin of the universe. Um, Static Graphs doesn't really feature much on this video, I'm afraid, so next week it may not be there. There's a little bit of Static Graphs, because, you know, it wouldn't be a video without one, but I can't remember which week that is actually. I think next week is probably just more base work because this is one of the things people forget about railways and things. There's an awful lot of groundwork to do. It, and I've, we've done the buildings already, but there's an awful lot of groundwork and everything to do. It's not the most... Oh, that's the lorry. So I had a problem. I put in my proper building and then I realised I squished this one when I did it. But when I printed the problem with the roof on and everything... I did it full size and I'd squashed this one front to back and it's actually a bad print. It's got a few lines on it that aren't great. It's the one I ended up using because I couldn't get the lorry through the gap with the bigger building. And this one, so it, it's right in the Z plane and in the X plane, but in the Y back to front plane, it's just been shrunk by two or three inches so that it would have fit for the road. And you don't notice it when you're front on to a layout. You don't notice that you've smushed. The back of my stairs on that wall, which is off to the right there, they're smushed massively, massively smushed back, technical term smushed. And so this is just forcing the perspective so it fits. And as a result, I had to redo the clay here um, because the um, base that I had for it was the wrong size. Uh, but yeah, now the lorry goes through the door and the gate that I'd done fits and it just looks more reasonable because I actually have to get a car in there as well. <laughs> Not really, says Phil Wright. Right, Kevicus, I was thinking about setting up a club, but what do I need to know before I put it out there in my own town? Any advice would be great. Um, I've, the only club I go to at the moment just meets in the local pub. That's all they do. And it's just scale models. I would say it depends. You just need to reach out to a few other people and just meet. It's never more than about three or four people there. I've done clubs where you meet in people's houses. It just depends what you want to do. A lot of it is very social, um, but meeting in a third party pub or location is good because you don't want to open your house up to real weirdos that you don't know right from the get go. You want to kind of know people first. And it was hard to get rid of some of the really chatty people at the end of the evening. Um, so, yeah. So, Mark says, I've taken on a few commissions in the past. 
But I've realised that if I'm not totally interested in the subject, I struggle to complete them to my own standards, so I no longer take them in. It's great self-knowledge to have there. Great. And actually, um, it's interesting. I I stopped doing model railways because I, I stalled on the two projects, but also I over-politicked myself out. I got too deep in the politics and fell out with the hobby. And it, I, I kind of lost the love for it at that point quite badly. And... I think sometimes you have to know yourself and why you do things and what the reasoning is. And I will never get involved in running things or doing politics or anything like that ever again in a hobby because it just doesn't mesh for me. It's not a hobby then. And I think if commissions are taking it out of the hobby realm, then that's brilliant to know. That's really good. Phil, Mark Wilson. That's a classic ADH trait. We tend to only be driven by things that really interest us, but even then it can be a challenge. Yeah, I recommend small dioramas if you're struggling to complete things because they're small, you know. You can get it done in your attention span. And you can also get it done on a YouTube video attention span. Um, I think Mark and Phil, or Paul, Phil probably, are just bonding there. Big Lars, Kathy, you just described me as you, project manager, executive and modeler. I need to rethink life. <laughs> yeah, um, it's been a difficult journey. I mean, uh, the job that I'm going for, um, the, the job that I'm going for started talking to me three years ago and we're still waiting for funding. I was hoping they might have signed this week, but they haven't. I'll, I'll mention on the live stream as soon as it's there. In fact, I may even then be already in the job because once the money comes in, it will be all hands to the deck. And I got to my early 40s and I thought, if I want to jump ship out of accounting, I've been doing it for 25 years. If I want to jump ship, I need to go now. I had a contract coming to an end and I just thought, I'm going to give it a go. And I can't say it's really worked out, but sometimes you just have to go for it. And if I had been in an accounting job, I wouldn't be available to do all the work I've done on this new project that's coming up and to go for it when it came free. I wouldn't have been in that position. I'd have been earning too much money to consider it. You know, it, everything just lines up. But sometimes you just have to step out in faith and understand there are wildernesses. wildernesses. And I've been in one for a while. Um... Mark Wilson, do you actually own a running model railway? If so, what's your favourite period? This is my running model railway. This is upstairs and it runs. It's finished, it's working. You're just not going to see it for another year as it slowly plows its way through the live streams because I did a year's worth of modelling in eight weeks to finish it for the TV show. But this works, apart from the Owen 30 that runs like a dog. I mean, it runs, it derails and it runs. And it's partly because the wheels are 3D printed and they need proper metal wheels. And I need to just work out what I'm going to do. And they need more weight. They ran a lot better when I weighted them. And I did put weights in and they, they ran better. But the unweighted ones, and you can't push them. So you couldn't switch with them or shunt with them. But actually, I was chatting to Tim Williams, who's the chairman of Bar Lake Railway. And they've got a set of Dinorwick, this particular one, Dinorwick, um, the, the slate wagons that I've got. And he said, they derailed on a straight run of track. So I just like the real thing would be my view. But the um, capacitors on the small little loco that pushes them have gone. So it stalls every time it comes on the layout. And I've rewired a couple of times and I've factory reset. So I need to spend a bit of time working on the ON30. But the double O, which runs back and forth, works fine. It's the only railway I've got in the house at the moment. The loft is empty. Where it's ripped out. And I'm not doing anything bigger than this ever again, just for space reasons. There's a workshop going in my loft. Um, I'm really excited to, to do that. They should, be, they should have started already, but hey, they're running late, which suits me because I haven't actually cleared the path to it. I've got stuff everywhere around the house and I need to reorganise my stuff around the house so I can get the stuff out the landing, which they're going to be building on so that um, they can get up there. But I think they're coming in a couple of weeks. I'll drop them in an email this week and see. Uh, my favourite period is probably about the 50s or 60s. Um, you know, end of steam, beginning of diesel. That's when I like. <laughs> Norm, the building covers up your beautiful tunnel. That messes with my OCD. Um, yeah, it does. But you can look through the hole at one end of the layout and look all the way through down to it. So that's cool. 
I also didn't paint the inside of the tunnel, which I should have done before I put it in place. Note to self, paint insides of tunnel before you glue them down. Um, I made it to the bottom, Norm, yes, I have. Chat, I finally caught up with 20 minutes to go. Um, so stating the obvious is all uphill from here then, let's hope. Um, yeah, it's just the trouble with these ON30, uh, 009, what am I on? These 009 little wagons is, they're about this big, you know, just wee diddy little things. And they're empty, they're 3D printed. There's absolutely no weight to them. There's nowhere to put weight on them because they're really small and low slung. I don't think the wheels are quite round. I don't think the 3D prints were the best I've ever done. They were, I used them pre-supported ones by um, Tim who gave me the wheels and the beautiful designed wheels, but the supports were a little, I, I, they were light and I put them on my whale. I should have put them on my Anycubic because they would have printed on my light all right, but I, sorry, my Elegoo Mars because they would have printed fine on there, but I put them on the whale and it just kept pulling them off and it distorted them slightly. The whale's got more suction on it. Um, yeah, I do mean 009, sorry. I did know N30 for one. I've got a few bits of it still floating around. And um, yeah, whoops. So Mark says, I have to model real life places. I've recently built dioramas on Swindon Works, Birmingham New Street and Stewart's Lane Depot. I have to copy things. I can't make things up. I don't know why. It doesn't matter if you're enjoying it. It doesn't have to be fictional. I love making up things so I can do explosions and I can do sci-fi. I love living in fantasy worlds, but I was chatting to my dad the other day and he was like, I don't like fantasy worlds. He didn't like Rings of Power, is what brought the discussion up. But he didn't like Lord of the Rings, he refused to watch it. So why we thought he'd like Rings of Power, I don't know, because we're really enjoying it. I love fantasy worlds because they're not real. That's why I like them. I don't want my TV to be depressing reality. I want it to be depressing fantasy reality. Um, you know, I like my TV to be different. Oh, I watched the prologue from um, Witch of Mercury, which is the new Gundam season coming out. Gundam love to have children and war as kind of like the main themes. And this one is no different, but wow, it was really packed a punch. It's 24 minutes long. Um, it's, on, it's in English subtitles on the Gundam Info YouTube channel. And if you're into anime, um, Gundam is one of the OG. It's from like 1979, the original. And I've watched probably four or five of the series. Hard to get over here. And um, this is the new one that's coming out and it was, it was cracking. Clay man, damn, I'm very late. You are, I can't, I'm probably gonna finish in about 16 minutes, but better late than never. Um, where did all the foliage come from? Ah, oh, it's, it's in a different video. Because this is groundwork, when I went through and sorted my video, I did all the stuff about the ground. <laughs> so what you're seeing now is, I did the Daz Clay, and then I painted it with multiple layers of thin washes of greys and browns to build up the depth in the colour. And that's what you're seeing very blurrily now, um, is me painting it. But I didn't want to do it completely chronologically because it, it got very bitty because I did some bits and then did other bits and then came back and did some bits and then did other bits. Some bits got done early, like the foliage on my left for the TV show coming out and recording on a certain date. So it just got a bit bitty and there's no video of that because they were videoing that so I couldn't exactly get my camera out while they were doing theirs. But the foliage, the trees, the bushes, everything gets its own video. Um, thanks Clay, he thinks it looks amazing. Mark, what do you think of steampunk within railways? I would say steampunk is probably one of my least favourite um, sort of genres. I, I'm not really a steampunk fan. And, and that's just as a genre. Um, within railways, if people enjoy doing it and um, they're gifted and Laurie, this amazing guy, did the steampunk designs that went into um, Hornby. And met him on the Great Model Railway Challenge. He's a really great guy and very passionate. And he does a beautiful layout with it on. It's something pass, beginning with C, K, anyway. Yeah, and I would, um, I really just, it, it's not my thing. I prefer sci-fi 
or I prefer railways, like proper prototype railways. But I appreciate anything that someone is passionate about. And Laurie is so passionate about it. I appreciate it because he appreciates it. And he does some amazing stuff. He really does. So short answer, I probably would never do it. Um, but I would do sci-fi trains. So I'm, at some point I'm going to do a maglev or something. And then I'm going to have to blow it to move it because it's really hard to move. Um, so Norm, it looks amazing. I hope you mean mine, but thanks Norm. Um, Monique says her layouts are all medieval so steampunk fits in. Perfect. You know, this is what I love about model railways and modelling. You don't have to want to do everything, but I can really appreciate other people's. I just really, really appreciate other people's work, um, you know, and, and watching their inspiration. Um, and, you know, Laurie Calvert, um, as I said, what is the name of it? Something Pass. Anyway, so he's got a sci-fi layout with loads of steampunk on it and the kids love it. And I love looking at it. It's brilliant as layouts go. It's just really different and interesting. And what I look for is different and interesting. That's what I'm looking for. Something I've not seen before. Now, there can be something in a great Western branch line that I've not seen before, but it's harder. So I really do appreciate his, um, just his style. And it, he's the person, I think, who brought steampunk into Hornby. And I, well, I think they were really good to take it on. They've not done any more, which is a shame. And I don't have any of them. Um, but yeah, it, it's great. It's a great mix. And um, yeah, great. I'd like to do sci-fi. It's interesting. I've started to look a lot of terrain because I'm designing some terrain um, for wargaming. And I don't particularly play, but I'm designing some. And there's quite a lot of people that do monorails um, and things like that. It's interesting just to look at their designs. I do follow, Norm says I'd like Jason Jensen's trains, he's working on G-Cell. I follow him, he, um, we chat to each other occasionally. Yeah, he, I love Jason. He does beautiful modelling, whether it's trains or sci-fi. He's, Empire Toy Works is where I, I, I think Jason got the inspiration to do that from Empire Toy Works, but there are several others like Empire. But Empire Toy Works has an entire basement that is like that and it's stunning it's really cool so go and check out empire toy works if you haven't seen that um mccary siding i agree getting the right weight on 3d printed running stock is a real problem especially in a scale open hopper are easily weighted but enclosed in items like box cars it's a real problem um on box cars i used to be fine with because i've got the metal weights and they go underneath because there's um, quite a long frame and I would put them underneath these metal weights or you can put them inside but open hoppers just nightmare absolute nightmare uh, so Darth Buzzes his only hang up with steampunk is it spawned cyberpunk diesel punk atom punk I love cyberpunk I've got a huge number of cyberpunk um, figures but to me cyberpunk is um, it's like the game which I haven't played because I've got an Xbox and some playable still on that um, but you know I like cyberpunk because I love that neon noir kind of look I've got the book by Liam Wong after dark and he's got another one Tokyo I've got Tokyo after darks coming out I love that just that neon and I would like to do that as a diorama at some point a cyberpunk diorama in fact I've got one planned to show off because um, I need to do it for my 3D printing. So I've actually got one coming in a couple of weeks, but it's a it's a Stinger by Second Dynasty firing down a road at either a motorbike or a car, and they're both cyberpunk, and it's all in neon and whatever. But you know, it's a it's a specific one because I need to get this Creality done. No video. Um, so Channel Five didn't pick up. Um. Mark is asking about Great Model Railway Challenge. I've not heard anything in years. It was kind of dead pre-lockdown. So I don't think it's coming back, would be my answer, I'm afraid. Mark Wilson, what's your favourite model diorama that you've ever made? Now, considering I've just said how much I hate my work, <laughs> I do have some that I like. I'm not that bad. 
Um, oh, and I think we've got to the end of the movie. So I'll put me back on. So the two I really like best, I love The Mandalorian because I just love that scene. It's got the stormtroopers that bob and I just really like that as a scene. I like the Halo one, though they did change the sci-fi style on me. Um, I quite like the Clone Wars one because it's an emotional moment in there and I connect with the emotion of it. So those are my favourites that I've probably made. Kato Pass. Thank you. Thank you, Dragon Junction, for dragging that out for me. I was going to home, going now somewhere I've been. Kato Pass. Yeah, it's excellent um, steampunk sci-fi mashup kind of layout and the kids adore it. Big Lars. Kathy, thanks for sharing your video. Your work is impressive. Hope to see more videos. Have to go now. I'd love you professional feedback for my work on my channels and move forward. Drop me a, a DM on Instagram or something or on Facebook or something to my page on Facebook or to my Instagram and definitely happy to do that. <laughs> Tim Duffer, Cyberpunk is the OG. Thank you. Yeah, Cyberpunk is the OG and I do like Cyberpunk. You're going all the way back to Blade Runner for that. Um... And Clay Man says, I don't think I'll ever not love the cyberpunk look, also known as Blade Runner, even though modern cities almost look like Blade Runner now. Well, yes. And I think that was just the prediction of Blade Runner was so good, wasn't it, about how things look. But how do they look, and this is like a Matrix moment that will really fry your noodle, um, do they look like Blade Runner because they're inspired by Blade Runner or was Blade Runner just prescient? Norm, that makes a lot of sense. I don't know what makes a lot of sense, but um, I agree, Norm. Bye, Lars. Darth Bears, I actually love them all, really, so not sure what my hang-up is, though. Well, it's just probably the naming. Everything gets a badge now, doesn't it? Claire, I'm glad you like the foliage. There will be a whole video on foliage, because it is obviously my favourite bit. Ooh, Mark Wilson. Am I a Warsy or a Trekkie? Big question. Well, I was a Trekkie, like 100% a Trekkie, up until The Mandalorian and Clone Wars. I would say Clone Wars converted me over to Star Wars. I'm not really, I prefer TV over movies, and I love the Star Wars TV. Not a huge um, recent Trek. Discovery leaves me cold. Lower Decks is okay. I actually, Enterprise the second time around, I thought was better. I haven't rewatched really Toz. I rewatched them all over lockdown apart from Toz. And, but I think Strange New Worlds is very good. But when it came to which one did I work, watch first, I think there was Strange New Worlds, the Orville, and something else that came out that night. And the Orville would always beat Strange New Worlds. Oh, and Halo. And I choose Halo, even though it wasn't Halo, over Strange New Worlds much as I love it, so difficult one. But I'm definitely more warsy than Trekkie now. Um, but I do prefer the long burn of a TV show over a movie. Polite. Hmm, my chat section here closes every few minutes and due to a server problem. Oh, it's weird. It, it always does really poor here until I remember to turn off my backup system, which is going up to the internet. Um, but yeah. Yeah, clay, reflective, rainy, neon noir. Perfect. So Darth Buzz is Star Wars. Tamsin, on Cyberpunk, have you read any of William Gibson's books? No. So I've got to remember Pierce Film Productions and William Gibson books. Um, Phil Wright, if you can play Stray, post-apocalyptic dystopian cyberpunk, but you play as a cat. Oh, perfect. Everyone's going Star Wars here. So is, is it a... Um, video game I'm going to go with. <laughs> okay, loads of people talking about Stray. Mark Wilson really enjoyed tonight. Thank you very much. Um, thanks, Mark. And I hope you found the imposter syndrome. If you don't have it, you may have found it a really boring conversation. But actually, I just wanted to show people that, you know, it impacts everybody. And a lot of people suffer from it and don't want to admit it. And there's nothing wrong with it. And actually... We probably need to set our expectations a little bit differently to where we are and learn to accept our work a bit more. Um, Darth Buzz, thank you, Kathy. Very interesting. Thanks for all the great comments, everyone. We learnt loads. Brilliant. And the whole point of this is to learn. So Monique says she shared some photos of her layout to Black Squirrels Games to see what they thought. Oh, excellent. Share some photos to me as well, Monique. Um, 
Oh, they love them. That's great. See, that's what you need. People from the outside, um, you know, giving you a good comment. Live long and prosper, Clay. Bye, totally, he says, evening. Norm, House of Dragons and Rings of Power at the same time. I'm loving both. I, I stopped watching Game of Thrones, so I haven't watched House of Dragons. I just got too incestuous, too nasty, too violent. I was fed up. Um, totally scale models build both Star Trek and Star Wars, but which do you prefer? Or are you sitting on a fence? Um, house. Just random house. So William Gibson um, has got another vote from Ratty Rex. He's one of my, he's got the Lil Cathy Millet logo because he's one of my YouTube members. Um, great, so loads of people voting for William Gibson. I'm going to um, wrap it up just so the last time I cut off really quickly and then the chat disappears. But thank you all for joining. It means a lot to me that you've come and spent a Sunday evening listening to me. If you're watching it later on, thank you for watching it later on. And if you've got any questions about Daz Clay, do drop them in the comments. I do respond to all the comments. If it's a rude comment, I don't. But all of the comments I respond to. I don't really get many rude ones. You know, people are generally very, very nice and I really appreciate the people who follow me are very nice and I'm very lucky. Um, unless you're a Star Wars fan and complaining about the second lightsaber on my Clone Wars diorama or the fact I accidentally said Stormtroopers rather than Clone Troopers once. Just, you know, forgive me. It was a sin. Um, but yeah, thank you ever so much for joining. And if you find that you're having problems with imposter syndrome, you need to find someone you can talk to about it because don't let it ruin your creativity. This is a hobby for most people and it's really important. It's an outlet for life. It's not pressured and it's a way of escaping. And make sure that you don't let yourself get in the way of an outlet if you can do something about it. But it is just a hobby. There's no pressure. There's no pressure to do it even. Um, right, so Tamsin, Gibson is the daddy of the genre. If you do read them, start with the Sprawl trilogy, Neuromancer, the original side book novel, Count Zero and Mona Lisa Raven. It's a great book. I haven't read a book in years. I just don't get time. Um, so loads of people talking to each other and... Um, all talking about William Gibson, but Dragon Junkie, thank you. Yes, Monique, great chat. Stay safe. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day because Monique's just getting up because she's in Brisbane. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks, guys. And it sounds like you're all really into William Gibson. Um, and thank you again to Norm, Digger and Timber, who are my moderators. I couldn't do this without them, though we didn't seem to have any chat bots that I noticed this time. Thank you, guys end the poll so we can see where we got to as well and um thank you very much guys for listening uh, there'll be a video out probably in a couple of weeks on 3d printing an ice cavern with little diddy clones in and there'll be a few 3d print ones as i get those videos out there for creality and elegoo for the free printers they gave me but i have to say the creality ender 3 s1 pro printing like a dream Elegoo Mars 3, Printing Light and Dream. Both have been beautiful printers and they deserve some great videos. So thanks everyone. Have a great modelling week and I will see you all next time. It will be in a month's time, second Sunday, 8pm. See you then.